Hey folks, welcome back to the University of Minnesota Spatial Computing MOOC. Uh, the last thing we're going to do in the first module is um, talk with a series of experts in the spatial computing field. And the first expert we're going to talk to is Dr. Johannes Schuning. He's a professor of computer science at Hassel University in Belgium. And uh, let's welcome Johannes here in uh, via Skype. Uh, hi, Johannes. Hey, Brent. How are you doing? Good. Um, so we have a series of questions for you today. Uh, the mm -hmm. first thing I want to ask is, uh, can you tell me a bit about your research interests? Yeah, sure, of course. So in, in general, my research interests are new methods and novel interfaces to interact and navigate through spatial information. So um, what does it mean? So let's make this thing a bit more concrete. So as I said, in general, I'm interested to um, design, develop, and test and evaluate user interfaces that help people to, um, to solve their daily tasks more, more efficiently or more enjoyable. For example, you know, um, um, a standard problem navigating from A to B. And my work really includes the development of, of various types of different user interfaces, ranging from mobile augmented reality interfaces. Uh, for example, my, in my early work, I combined the advantages of, of a paper map with the advantages of, um, of, of a mobile device by using the mobile device like a, like a magic lens over the paper map, as I, I still think that paper maps are still superior to their digital counterparts in, in several ways. And with that, you know, magic lens augmented reality approach, we combine the advantages of both medium. But as I said, it's not just only mobile augmented reality, it's a range of different user interfaces, interactive surfaces and tabletops, and other post desktop interfaces. Yeah, that's more or less, in a nutshell, my, my main research interests. Great, Johannes. Now I was wondering if you could tell us uh, how you began working in the uh, spatial computing domain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, as, um, as I said, I studied geoinformatics at the University of Münster in, in Germany. And the Institute for Geoinformatics there is one of the leading institute in, in that area in the world. And, and um, geoinformatics is an inter... Uh, disciplinary and, and very interesting subject between computer science and all the other uh, geoscience. And yeah, that's how I dived into, uh, into the research. And of course, you know, before that, before um, studying geoinformatics, um, I'm addicted to maps. I was addicted to maps before. I enjoy to hike and climb high mountains. So paper maps are and uh, um, are still my, my daily com, uh, companions. And therefore, of course, I was uh, attracted for such a very, very interesting interdisciplinary study area like, like geoinformatics. You and I both have that in common. We both were, were big map nerds before getting into this field. Yeah, I suspect that many of you were as well. OK, let's move on to the next question. Um, what do you think has been the most important new spatial technology or research paper over the past two or so years? Okay, that's that's a tough question. Of course, it is a was, tough one. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of stuff, but um, for me, for me, a really, really interesting and influencing point was the release of Google Earth um, now, like nine or ten years ago. I was still an undergrad student at this time, as as far I can uh, as I can remember. But I was amazed how simple it could be to develop a user interface that gives the users the power to access satellite data from all over the globe. So while being, you know, while studying geoinformatics, you know, I, we, we worked with like highly complex commercial um, GIS systems. And it was always very, very hard to integrate like satellite data from different sources or even get hold of the satellite data. And Google Earth was really, really like a turning point in, in that and was really a big step forward providing a really an easy and intuitive user interface to access to access a rich amount of, of uh, raster spatial spatial information and also the te technology itself you know it's it's a globe and you put the put the put the satellite data on the technology itself i think is not very very complicated i really think that this simple idea was really one of the breakthroughs of of geoinformatics or spatial computing in the last um, i would say in the last decade and it also it brought the power of um, spatial information to the users. This, I think, was also an, an important point. Yeah, I remember you did some very interesting work um, going back, I guess, seven or eight years where you projected um, Google Earth onto a wall-sized display. Um, 
well, actually on a wall using a projector, right? And you were, you were interacting with that with uh, all sorts of interesting techniques. I think I recall you uh, uh, do, uh, doing one where you're able to turn the earth with your nose. Is that correct? <laughs> this was just, you know, uh, it was a fun project. This was a fun project. And now, you know, it dates back to 2005. We were also, you know, I'm not sure if um, the course audience is familiar with the work of Jeff Hun. He had a famous TED Talk uh, presenting his technique to realize a large uh, multi-touch surface. We picked up that the idea of FDIR that he brought back uh, in 2005, 2006, and of course you could interact with a virtual globe with your hands and feet and also with the nose, but of course mainly we use our <laughs> hands to interact with um, um, spatial information. And actually we, we did not work with, with Google Earth there, it was another worldwide. Oh, that's used, right, that's um, right. The, the, uh, the virtual globe of, of, of NASA and not the uh, Google Earth uh, um, um, product because um, the um, um, NASA virtual globe is, is far more open and you have a better chance to, to interface with, with it. That's right, I recall that now. So uh, moving on to the next question, um, what is the project that you're working on right now that gets you most excited? Of course, uh, tons of stuff is going on uh, at the moment. Uh, we're right before uh, an important deadline. <laughs> and um, I'm, I'm, I'm working on various projects, and I, I guess I could fill up you know, the whole course with all the projects uh, I'm working on. But um, let's take like two, three uh, recent examples. One example I would like to mention is the Photomap project. It dates back a couple of years ago. And Photomap was a mobile application that helps users to snap a photo of a map and then georeference that photo of the map on the fly, meaning you assign real world coordinates to the pixels of the photo of the map. And then you can use that photo of a public map that you found, you know, in, in a park or wherever you, you walk around. You can use that photo for navigation, and this was proven a very, very useful application for the users. So this was one one um, uh, recent project, uh, which also you know contained a very you know simple idea, but it was quite powerful. A second one I would like to mention. It's a very, very recent one. We're currently working on how to bring maps to smart watches. I guess we have seen the keynote. Um, a uh, few um, few days uh, ago from, from Apple, they're presenting their smartwatch interface. And here the challenges from the human-computer interaction points are that you have a very, very tiny display and very, very limited interaction. And we're currently working on different, to explore different visualization methods to bring maps back to such a tiny wrist-worn device like, like the Apple Watch. And maybe the third one, a fun one, is um, our A social hiking app. So you know, I told one. you before, I love um, uh, going to the mountains, I love the woods. And the A social hiking app is a mobile application again that helps people first, we have a desktop client, to help uh, people to find routes that are more likely to be lonely routes through the woods. So we analyze, you know, open street map data, we analyze Flickr information, to get information whether a route is more likely to be lonely or not. And then we also have a mobile prototype and a mobile extension where we use um, networking technology to also try to sense if um, co-hikers are nearby or approaching you to give you a warning to still feel alone on your hike. For me, a very, very important uh, um, application to escape from from university life over the weekend and not meet any colleagues in in the world. <laughs> I think these are like two three recent examples. I I could continue I guess like for the next hours, but I guess you know the course time is also limited. It, you know the a, the a social hiking app is one that I really like as well. I think many of us can uh, relate to the feeling of being overconnected, and and Johannes has done some wonderful work uh, using technology to actually reverse that effect. Uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing what happens with that project next. Thanks so much for joining us, Johannes. Um, and I encourage everyone to uh, go check out Johannes' um, papers. They're really wonderful and, and very creative. Thank you, Brent.